You know, I'm trying to understand which one of these cars would get destroyed by the new Corvette Z06. I'm gonna assume in a straight line it's probably faster than this. <laughs> probably faster than this AMG GT Black Series. I mean, that, that thing's fast, but it's not that, that fast. It's probably not as fast on a track as this or this, but I, I would say probably in the top end, it's probably slower than this, but, but it's probably faster off the line than this, too. It's definitely faster than that. It's probably somewhere around the same performance as that on the takeoff and stuff. I mean, these cars don't really count. I mean, that one's probably getting crushed by Z06. I don't think that would hold any record. And you know, it's made me believe that the Z06 Corvette is such good value because if you can't afford anything else, then it's the perfect car for you. Because what it would do, theoretically, it would give you three core things. One, it would give you a car that makes you believe it's an investment. And since you don't understand money, it would probably be right for the first six months where you'd hear a friend that flipped it for 20K over or 30K over. And since you don't even know what the value of 30K is, then that would be like amazing. So that would be one. Two, it would let you brag on the internet how a car that you can afford can beat other cars you can't afford so yeah, it would definitely do that because it would give you that power to be able to say, I made a better decision because I got more for my money, even though your money is a 20th or a 30th of the average person that is gonna buy these and not that. But let me think what else. What's the third thing it could give you? Yeah, well, I mean, it would give you low maintenance costs low repair costs, all the things that all these cars have, but because you don't know how to use the internet, oh no, you do, that's why you're trolling people about how fast the new ZS6 is. But since you don't know how to use the internet to make more money to afford one of these, so that, yeah, that makes sense. So there you go, that's the loophole. You know how to use the internet when it's convenient, not when you actually need to learn how to be super successful. So yeah, so all of these things make a lot of sense. And in short, that's really how wealthy people think about the Corvette Z06. If you didn't catch my drift, it's probably because you're one of these people that actually believes that someone who can afford this, or this, or that, or any car here, cares. And this is the part that unsuccessful, un wealthy people, or should I say really broke people, mentally broke, and your wallet is a byproduct of your mind. So usually, if you are that way, it's primarily because you want to justify your failure rather than push yourself to success. So today, instead of discussing just the new Z06, let's talk about the things that do matter about the things that don't matter. First off, it is very common that American cars are significantly more powerful in nature than non-American cars. Meaning we know American cars bring big horsepower and dollar value. But if you start to understand why things are priced as such, because you don't understand basic economics, then you start to realize that the reason foreign cars are significantly more money is the same reason a Corvette in a foreign country cost like 500,000 sometimes. You ever think that true? Hmm? Maybe it's just because it's made here. It's like pushed here. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, maybe, maybe use Google a little bit more often, you know? Like just hit the little keys, learn a new skill, like learn to learn about economics or why cars are cheap here and so on and so forth. But anyways, I, I mean, it's not like I teach people how to value cars or anything or that's not what I've done for the last 10 years. So you on the internet absolutely know better that the Corvette Z06 is a bad ass car. Yeah. 
Anyways, so what do I think of Corvette's newest and awesome Z06? So here was my thought on the C8. I thought it was one of the ugliest Corvettes to ever come out, ever come out. It's unproportional, its headlights are off, the bumper looks like crap, the side vents looks like a shark and makes no sense, and the rear tail is just horrendous because they basically couldn't finish the car, hired the guy that designed the Camaro and said, I'll give you $12 of overtime if you sit here. And he said, I get it, but I have dinner plans, so I'm just gonna take the back of a Camaro and slap it on. And the guy was like, brilliant, I love you, and this is why our companies are going bankrupt behind Tesla. It makes sense, it really does, but, what I would say is that it's a lot of performance, it's a lot of performance, and it's very exciting, right? Well, it's really not, because reality is there are a couple of things that people don't understand about why we, individuals who can afford, but let me, this, is, this might shatter your mind right now, and I mean, it's gonna blow your mind. Can you imagine that I, with, like right behind you, there's like four or five million dollars in cars, I can also afford a Z06. Like, can you imagine that? Like, like, I could buy one, and I choose not to. But you probably can't buy one of these, and you're forced to buy one. So there's a difference, and that's the power of money, which you should learn something about. The importance of money is that if you can buy this, you can easily buy that. And if you choose not to, that opinion holds a lot more relevance than the guy who cannot buy this that, this, 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 and that, and can only buy one thing, and that is the best he can afford. Because you see, when I was poor, and I was really young, you see, I walked in a dealership, and I had the wrong mindset. I would always talk crap about the cars I couldn't afford. Because believe it or not, I started my car journey with a Mustang, that's right. And I couldn't even afford much more than a V6, and I used to always talk crap about how the V6 was better than the V8. I would always talk crap about these things. But you know what happened later? I evolved. And you know what I didn't have? I didn't have the internet like you guys do to evolve faster. But so you have tools that monkeys didn't have and yet you don't use them. That's problem one. The second real big issue here is that not only I think the C8 is a piece of crap, I think the C8 Z06 is an even larger piece of crap on the simple basis that it's a Corvette and it looks horrible. And it looks horrible because there's one thing that manufacturers a GM do that People at you know, AMG's specialty line don't do, not all AMG's are the same that McLaren's don't do, the old Ferrari days don't do. You see, you don't see modern Ferrari because Ferrari's starting to do this too, and this is a problem in the auto industry. It's called kissing ass to the customer, actually wondering and asking yourself, what does my customer want, and then giving him that. This is the problem in the industry today, and this is why I hate the new Corvette Z06. You know why? Because it focuses heavily on the lack of inspiration, the lack of aspiration, the lack of experience, and more about giving someone something that feeds the fire of garbage. To give someone bragging rights when they're never going to use their car, never going to track it, never going to do anything, and yet has zero value in any way. It doesn't create an experience worthy of anything. Do I think it's a cool car? Sure. If you can't afford something else, then I think it's great. Do I think it's a better car than most of the old cars you can't afford? Like, meaning, should you buy a new Corvette Z06 or an old Ferrari F430? I think the new Corvette Z06 is a performance monster that'll destroy the old F430. The problem with people is that they believe in their minds. They believe in their minds that someone who would buy an old F430 that could afford to buy a new Z06 because they're about the same price used and new, but they're really not, right? You know why? Because this is how money works. People that buy a new Z06 Corvette, guess what? They can finance them, they're brand new. People that buy 2006 Ferrari F430s, they can't really. It's harder, it's older, you need more cash down. And so the reality is, you have to understand that there's two different breeds of people. And there's two different opportunities ahead of you. And the opportunities to one, buy into the stupidity, or two, to realize that anyone, anyone who can afford one of these can buy five of your Z06s and burn them to the ground, and they choose to not do that. There's a difference between having a choice in finance, having a choice in cars, and not having a choice in it. 
So instead of lecturing you about what I think about performance numbers, I've been very unbiased about cars in general. So instead, I've decided I'm going to take you to my office and tell you three cars you could buy that are going to be better than the Corvette Z06 and that are going to change your life for the better using exotic car hacks principles, principles that can help you not only safeguard your money and not just buy into the hype and the rush and the hopes of making a quick 10 grand, but using the right strategies to get your mind right, get yourself set up monetarily correctly, and then move yourself forward. So let's go to my office and talk about that for a second. All right, guys, so I promised you three cars you could afford that would be better value than specifically a new Corvette Z06. And I want to show you three of these cars. The first one is the Audi R8 V10 Spider. If you're looking for a fun car to drive that's going up in value over the next three months, these cars will be going up. And in addition to that, not only you're getting a convertible, you're getting a badge, and you're getting a car that has now been uh, discontinued. So this is a great, great opportunity for someone to get in a car roughly about 70K under sticker rather than paying over. Now another car like this Gallardo here, under 150 grand, uh, LP560 Spider. These are low mileage examples, not even negotiated. You could buy this car somewhere around 140 under. The point of this that I'm trying to make is Lamborghinis open doors, Corvettes do not, just to be clear. There's nobody you want to network with that is only driving a Corvette. But anyways, so back to this. So And before one of you, peasants out there starts telling me that, you know, Warren Buffett or Mark Zuckerberg drives a Camry, you may want to recheck your stats and your education, not from Instagram memes, but actual research. Do that. Anyways, and the next one is the 570S, which is also incredible value at 100K below sticker on a used car, and these are fantastic cars all around. They're very, very low issue type McLarens. You're getting uh, P1 looks for basically like 10% of P1 pricing. Reliability of McLaren better than any of the other models. That's right. This is not coming from a guy who has owned one McLaren, but from a guy who has owned 15 plus McLaren and all of them from the old MP4 days all the way to the latest stuff. So uh, including the Senna I just showed you. So to be fair, from experience, the 570S is the better of McLarens from a reliability standpoint, usually just based on volume alone that they sell more. All three of these cars would be better buys than a new Corvette Z06, regardless that you are in love with the fact that on paper it shows zero to 60 in two seconds, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter because these cars open doors. These cars push you to aspire to get greater cars. Justifying failure by telling yourself that you're going to buy a car just to be like, it gets this, this is so much power for the money. 99% of people who defend cars online typically can't afford those same cars. Meaning the same people that are sitting there being like the new Z06 will be the greatest thing to obliterate all Ferraris, whatever, still can't afford even a Z06 or a Ferrari. So the point is this, if you can afford a Lamborghini, usually you can afford a Z06, you choose not to buy one. Doesn't matter, the choice is in your hand. If you usually only can afford a Z06, you can't afford other cars. That's the dynamic. Now, there are plenty of people I know who also collect the Z06 in addition to all the other cars. And while I think there is a lot of coolness to having maybe a very fast car as part of a large collection, it's also the same argument I've made that if you are someone who understands exotics, you typically don't make a GT3 RS, you're only exotic because you're missing out on like, 70% of what the whole idea of exotics is altogether. So there you have it. Learn to get in and out of exotics without losing money. Stop justifying poverty by telling people that the Corvette Z06 is the next greatest thing to appear on earth and start learning basic economics at Exotic Car Hacks. Click the link, join. Maybe it's cheaper. Maybe it'll teach you something. Who knows? But it's Black Friday, so maybe you'll learn something. It's just $197 for memberships. Make sure to like, or I'm going to actually make sure to hate the video because you got really like hurt inside when I talked about that Z06. Make sure you hit dislike. I hate you, man. You remind me of everything. For every dislike you give me, leave a comment also about what you disliked about the video because I really love it when the truth hurts. I'm one of those people that love instigating truth out of people and sometimes it hurts and it's okay. But if you're crying in your bathroom, I just don't want you to feel that way. I, I just want you to feel happy about it. So maybe watch the Disney Channel after and you know watch Bambi and the overcoming of Anyways, see you guys next time.